What's up, wrestling fans? Welcome to episode number 474 of the Smart Cow Moment Smack Talk Podcast Hot Tags of the Week, the final one of 2020, where we're going to be breaking down some of the current events, rumors, news, gossip, hearsay, scuttlebutt, and everything else that has gone down in the world of pro wrestling over the past few days that we feel like talking about. I am your host as always, Tony Mango. Joining me as always is Robert DeFelice. It's the hot tags. You know what that means. That is very true. We have uh, one major topic to talk about that is the worst type of topics that we ever talk about on hot tags. I got some other stuff we're going to... the worst kind of circumstance for that worst kind of topic. Like, the worst. Yeah, it's nothing positive about that one. We got some other stuff we're going to mention, too. We're going to talk about Raw. Obviously, we're doing this at an earlier time than we normally would do. We would usually do it on Fridays. The recording schedule all over the place here because of the holidays and everything. So we knocked out the end of the year awards already. That's going to be coming up on Wednesday, the 30th. I'll schedule it for. And since it seemed a little bit weird to end it on the hot tags and to try to do the hot tags on Friday and also to wait so long to talk about the main topic and wait until all the way through Friday, it seems like this was the best call. So we're not going to be breaking down whatever happens in the meantime that stuff will get pushed into the next hot tags obviously if anything crazy happens on uh nxt or smackdown or 205 live or whatever then we'll talk about that it at due time maybe even do a dark cast or something i don't know but we're gonna just uh talk about some stuff here so we invite you to do the same tell us your thoughts in the comments section below if you are not on a comment section platform you know you're not on like youtube or uh facebook or twitter or the page on smartcomemoment.com or something like that, then head on over to one of those and do that because that's what I'm talking about. So if you are on like Spotify or something, then by all means, leave a follow or a like or whatever it is on there. But if you're over on YouTube, hit the like button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button, ring that little notification bell, hit the join button, hit the membership button, hit the uh, applause button, all that good stuff. If you don't know what the join button is, it's basically the same as the Patreon. So go to patreon.com slash smartoutmoment and you'll see the tiers there that are exactly the same as the one on YouTube membership stuff. I've broken that down enough. If you want to know more about it, ask me. I'll fill you in. It's basically donate a buck or more if you got it. We'll get into that another time. Um, let's just, uh, I guess let's just go with the lead. Start things off. The, the reason that we're doing this more than anything, uh, Birdie Lee, John Huber, Luke Harper, whatever you want to refer to him as, passed away the other day, unfortunately, at the age of 41. And there's been some speculation about the specifics behind it. I know that there was a, an article on PW Torch that was written that kind of uh, has been cast in a, a bad light. I didn't read the article. It's been taken down since then so i don't know what was said in it but yeah I, okay so basically he heavily heavily speculates speculates now ah, speculated, speculated. <laughs> that it's covid and here's the deal john huber's wife amanda said it's not it's a non-covid related illness it's a lung illness right the end. now we haven't heard what exactly the lung illnesses technically speaking it's not our business so if we never find out that's okay i know that people want to know everything that they need to know about everything like that but you know that's a family matter who cares if that's the case you know like, we don't need to know that if i i, I, I just want to say this if AEW was respectful enough to not come forward and say that the man was ill they knew the man was ill right but they were respectful to his wishes and his family's wishes. Didn't say it. I, I just don't think it's our place. Mm -hmm. And I, I am of the belief that we will know. Eventually, there will be some kind of autopsy results, and we'll know whatever it is. Right. And I think as time passes and people are allowed to grieve, mm. more, you know, they'll feel more comfortable saying, "Hey, this happened." It was sudden, it was powerful, it was unfortunate. And the most important thing isn't what happened to lead to that point, it's what happened. Because the biggest deal about this whole thing is, uh, you know, everybody lost a friend, a family member, a co-worker, uh, somebody that they were a fan of, 
and that's just the worst possible thing. Like, uh, you know, at the end of the day, as bad as everything is in the world, the one worst thing is something like this. Doesn't matter if you're having a bad day, you got, you know, if you lost your job, if whatever. This is the this is the thing that takes the cake, and especially when it's you hear about like, there's no benefit like to anything like that, and there's no comparisons and you know all that kind of stuff. But you can actually have a discussion of like, well, when somebody reaches a certain age, you sort of have like a an acceptance of it. And, well, you know, somebody's 150 years old and it's like, OK, well, they, they had a long life and, you know, thankfully that was the case and whatever. And when you hear that somebody's 41 and you're just like, damn, God, that sucks so much worse, you know? Yeah. Um, it was it was the most polarizing of emotions that I have felt in a long time. I had eaten. I was eating dinner and it was like this really comfort food kind of dinner and I'm just enjoying this and laughing and I get to my phone and all of a sudden my phone's blowing up. Brody Lee's passed away and I'm like instantly numb and mm. through conversations with a friend and just seeing the outpouring of love and support because there's been a lot of it. I realized how much I I wasn't like, oh my god, Brody Lee, Luke Harper is my favorite wrestler ever. But I did realize how much I viewed him as like a dependable okay, when he's on the screen, it'll at least be fun. And all of a sudden now, not only is that person gone, but a guy who by all accounts was an absolute angel that I really wish I could have known at one point in my life is now gone. And yeah, it's, it's been heartbreaking to read some of these stories. It's great to hear the stories though. Like some people are, you know, fair enough to like, I don't think anybody needs to do anything in particular in any kind of situation like this. People grieve differently. People feel comfortable talking about things and some people don't. So plenty of people, they might just say this is terrible. And my heart goes out to the family and that's it. You might not hear anything else. And I don't think that, I think it's ridiculous when people start going like, oh, that's not good enough. And what is it? it's like, let people deal with it the way they're going to deal with it. But it's great to see like Big E tweeting out stuff, talking about how um, like stories that they used to uh, do to just make each other laugh. Uh, I forget the story he had said, but like he used to tell people that he was like, football player and he blocked for Jerry Rice or something like that just to make himself and Big E laugh. Uh, uh, Big E has been the account to follow throughout all of this. And yeah, he's been so openly emotional about it. One of the ones that got me was he had said Harper cried with him when he was heartbroken about the George Floyd stuff earlier this year. Harper was one of the people to call him and cry with him. And uh, it's just like, wow, what a great human being to do that. And Marco Stunt put out a text message where he, Brody said, I, I wanted to make sure you were okay because I guess he got knocked out in a match. And Marco's like, I'm fine. And he said something like, yeah, well, you enjoy that time off, you rest up, and then you ask for a raise. It just, it seems like Brody is the kind of guy who, I'll compare him to you, because you're very much this kind of guy, who will just go out of his way to put a smile on somebody's face and just be this weird, positive person to be around, even if you're not having the most positive time in your own life. And it just seems like he was a great human. And I'm sad that I did not know this person. Oh, that is definitely a major compliment. Thank you. Um, yeah, he seems by all accounts to be some, like, it sounds weird to say like one of the good ones, but in a business that has a lot of CD people and a lot of backstabbing people and all that, 
there's not a single bad word that's been said about him throughout this whole thing. Nobody's going, yeah, that fucker owed me money. He whatever. He did this. He didn't put me over. He but everybody's talking about whether you were in the WWE roster or the AEW roster on the indies or whatever. Everybody's like, let me tell you this story about whatever where he's looking out for me or like John Silver talking about how he really was taken under his wing and he paid uh, Huber had paid for his coat and some ring gear and was talking to Tony Khan about like making silver. One of these like standout guys from dark order. Um, Alan angels told a really good one about Brody giving him his coat, the white coat. And he's like, look, you can be my white knight and it looks good on you. You wear the white pants as it is and you can hide your injury and nobody will know. And then you'll be a hundred percent and we can go somewhere with you. It's like, good Lord. Brody Lee seems like the wrestler that you want every wrestler to be. A locker room leader, like a veteran who actually gave back. And um, it just sucks. Like, you know, that's there's nothing worse than that kind of a thing, you know? My heart goes out to his children. Right. Who by all accounts, it seems like he just loved being a father. Everybody's and, talking about like how much of a family man he was. Yeah, right. And like how I think it was Rowan who said every time I left him, he would say, you know, goodbye forever because I don't want to see you ever again. I want to just go yeah. home and be with my kids. Thank you. Goodbye. Uh, it's uh, the Bray Wyatt tribute we'd be remiss not to talk about where he said, you know, you were my best friend. We just wanted to do this until we were old men running Wyatt family spots in high school gyms. Yeah. <laughs> what do we, where do we go from here? What do we do now? It's like, Jesus Christ. One, another one that really stuck out to me, Stephanie, who does not have to do this, could have easily put out a, a you know, company statement said, you know, we used to bond over our children and again, it's that, like, the man loved being a family man. And it seems like uh, his son's name is actually is Brody. And they had filmed the spot where Brody, his son, pins Kenny Omega and wins the world title. Um, they had done a thing. They're doing a thing on Wednesday that's going to be a Brody Lee tribute show. And his son got to pick one of the matches, which is... Cody, Orange Cassidy, and five against. Um, is it five or is it ten? I, I, you know, I really should look it up. It's. I think it it's might ten. Be ten. I might be ten. I might be Preston Vance against uh, Team Taz, and it's, it's so, it's heartbreaking, right? Because it's, I, I hate death. I, I obviously everybody does, but I love when things bring people together and you're just seeing all these different rosters co-mingle and just share good stories and positivity and love. I think CM Punk came out and he was like, yeah, if you buy any of my merchandise from Pro Wrestling Tees, it's, the proceeds will go straight to his family. Mick Foley's doing the same thing. Right. It's, I want more of that without the tragedy needing to precede it. It is uh, 10, by the way. It is 10, okay. Um, the other matches that they've switched, uh, now it's Ana Jay and Ty Conchi against Dr. Brett Baker and Penelope Ford. Uh, Young Bucks and Cole Cabana against Matt Hardy and Private Party. Eddie Kingston, The Butcher and the Blade, and The Bunny, well, on the side, against Lance Archer, Evil Uno, and Stu Grayson. I and... think that one might have some staying power to it. What do you mean? I uh, Lance Archer in the Dark Order. I mean, we'll get to, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But like that, that pairing looks good to me. And there's also Hangman Page, John Silver, and Alex Reynolds against three people of the Inner Circle: uh, Santana and Ortiz and MJF. So they're doing this instead of the Holiday Bash, and they're they're pushing everything basically off to the side a little bit. And that is the right thing. To do by the very, way. very much so. Uh, 
it's not like this is a commitment of a pay-per-view where they can't get around just pushing the creative a week, you know? Do a tribute show, make that uh, in honor of your friend and your member of your roster, and, and get around to the holiday stuff, you know, the, the, the next week after that. And the thing about AEW is they're dealing with something that no promotion should ever have to deal with, but they're dealing with very early on. This is a guy who did, was going to be a major player for them, and now he's passed away, and you have to honor his life. And also, like, just shift plans. And obviously that's secondary, but my God, this you know it's it's a weird thing when you think about he just came to the company in march right and like now he's gone you know and it really makes you think really enjoy every moment because as cliche as it is you genuinely don't know when it when it's all going to come to a halt so enjoy everything while you can and I think Brody did that. It's clear to me that like he's somebody who loved life and I want to love life more, I think in the coming year. And a lot of that has to do with Brody. 2020 has been a very sobering year. Yeah. And like you said about like uh, people coming together only through tragedy. It's the thing that happens. It's stupid that it's the case, but it's true. It's like people talk to each other more with a funeral because they've got that thing that like got them to actually open up and it takes, you know, horrible circumstances to get people to put aside the bullshit and focus on what matters. And then people forget about it again. Inevitably people just go back to normal and then they have to relearn that lesson over and over. And it's a shame that, that type of a thing happens, period. It's a shame that this isn't a story of... Because it seemed like he was... He was out with an ankle injury from some stories. Right. And then, out of nowhere, it's just like, oh, by the way, he passed away. It's a lung condition and whatever. It's like, wait, what? I thought that the guy was out with a, an ankle injury. Like, at most, I had thought that maybe he was away because he had decided he didn't want to be a part of things during COVID because there's some people that have done that. Like some people are staying I at home. Ryder did that, didn't he? He was like, he'd done a few shows and then he just decided now nah, I'll go home. Uh, I think that the story was Mercedes Martinez was away for a while because of that. Right. So with the way that things are going, we don't know who is unavailable for travel, who is unavailable because of, wanting to be safer, who's unavailable because of some kind of other issues, you know, positive or negative, you know, some positive like Becky Lynch being pregnant. Like she's been gone because of that. We know that because they've, you know, told us and she had a kid, you know, like, but we, we never really know. And the last thing that I had heard was just like, oh, he's got an ankle injury. And I'm like, that sucks. Eh, he'll be back in a little bit. And then I did, poof, I did think you know? it was weird that like nobody was talking about it. And I kept going, like, where, where is he? But again, like you said, you know, Sami Zayn earlier this year just sort of left. And it was like, it was what it was. And then all of a sudden, he's gone. And, you know, you have chilling flashbacks as a wrestling fan to, like, years like 2007, where every other month or every other week of the month, in some cases, there was a wrestler passing away at a young age. And I, I'm so, like, as weird as it is today, it's only because it's wrestling. But I'm so grateful that it wasn't, like, and he actually had a crippling addiction. And he actually, you know, was slowly killing himself through this vice. It just a weird turn of life, which sucks. But at least you can say he lived. And it seems like he lived to the highest extent, you know? 
Yeah, it's not um not much of a thing to take a lot of comfort in, but it's something more than some other people actually get. Uh, you mentioned you think that there might be something to the Lance Archer thing. I mean, it's not a priority, and it shouldn't be, and I'm sure it isn't. But I, eventually, I'm absolutely sure it isn't. And at some point, you know, it's like mid or even late January, early February, when we're ready to start rolling again and start talking about it, it will be interesting to see how they proceed. But right now, I'm just concerned with honoring the guy's life and taking care of the family and absolutely like what an awe this is a weird year for wrestling in terms of just the the people we lost and how we lost them you know you had shad yeah i I keep forgetting that that was this year he went out like a hero um finkel and patterson Road Warrior Animal, who also suddenly passed, uh, is just, it's one of those things. It's never easy to lose a part of your fandom like that. But with Brody, I, I feel this weird comfort in the beautiful stories that have come out. And just knowing that, like, here's this dude who just wanted to make others around him happy. And if you watch Being the Elite, it's all just the Dark Order stuff and the outtakes, and you could just see how much fun that they had, and it's just been a blast to get to, you know, discover this person that was behind the character. I haven't seen that episode yet. I have it on my watch later. I'm going to be checking that out afterward. Um, Good episode? Very good. Very good. Because, I mean, I loved the type of stuff that they were doing. I loved the recurring theme of he's the only real serious one, and he's, you know, smacking John Silver over the head with the uh, You're gonna papers. You're going to see the of them laughing at all of that. That's got to be bad enough because it's like they laugh on the normal episodes. <laughs> yeah. You know? it, they it, seemed it, like they were always having a lot of fun. Yeah. And it's it sucks, man, only because... Yeah, he was really coming into his own. Moxley said something to the effect of, I, I can't wrap my head around it. I just don't understand why it's always the good ones that are taken so early. And I, I can't say it any better. Does seem to be like that happens a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, it's not... Uh... It's not an easy thing for anybody to handle in any way, and I think that mm, that's a nice way to to word this. That isn't too harsh. Well, it doesn't matter if it's too harsh. People need to stop complaining about how other people approach it. I think, like, everybody's got their ideas of like this is what they should do and this is what this company should do and they should create this type of a match and they should do this or whatever. And it's like, you're not making all the calls and we don't know what's going on with anything. Like maybe, maybe people don't want to process it that way. Maybe people want to do something else. Maybe there is something in the, in the works. You know, I, I think that people need to kind of like sit back and not start jumping on Twitter and finding enemies in something like this, there there is no enemy, you know. I I know that Hawkins was very uh, broken up. Let's say about the fact that WWE on Raw at least didn't have a whole lot of tribute. There was just a one graphic at the start of the show, and I liked that they started it off with "It's Monday." You know what that means? Yeah, I that's think- a nice little thing. <laughs> They left it to the talent, and the talent delivered in that regard. Uh, Drew McIntyre and Tom Phillips started off with It's Monday. You know what that means. Um, throughout the night, Xavier Woods hit a discus clothesline before doing a Harper's little taunt. And I think uh, Phillips even called it a big Harper clothesline, to which Samoa Joe followed up with Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. And I enjoyed that. Alexa Bliss also hit him with the yeah, 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 which I thought, again, really cool. It's 
it's tough because I was one of the ones who was like expecting more from the company only because of just like the outpour was so strong and like yeah maybe we should just give people like this show to vent and let out their emotions for this fallen comrade but I also understand that maybe they thought the best way to handle it was how they did it and at the I think it would I think there would have been cause to complain if they wouldn't have had that graphic and stuff up because then that would have been like all right, you're actively avoiding that just because he's not in the company. That's that's low. Yeah, it was very weird. They they really honed in on at least in social media on like the John Huber instead of saying even Luke Harper. Yeah, I understand not wanting to say Brody Lee, even though Xavier was had an armband on it that said Brody. It seems like a lot of people behind the scenes called him Brody. Yeah. Well, I mean that was his indie name beforehand. Yeah. Randy Orton put out a thing saying that he was always Luke to him because it's different. You know, you've got different ring names. People, even if you go by they're not necessarily the ring names, some people go with completely different names. Like you could call him Christian, Christian Cage, Jay, William. You know, it's like it's all over the place. But I think at the end of the day, it just becomes, well, they're trying to figure out a way to show tribute to their friend. And whether you're Dax Harwood and you're putting up a video of uh, Harper or Brody Lee or whatever you want to call him, that he had recorded them uh, during some kind of a tour doing like a drinking contest with water. And if it's just like, yeah, this is like one of those days kind of a thing. Or if you've got a heartfelt type of thing, like a Bray Wyatt thing or whatever, everybody has their own grief uh, methods and... Um, I'm glad that they did the little it's Monday, you know what that means. But we never figured out why that was the case, did we? I'm very much in the camp of they told him to tweet and he was just like, I don't know. (laughs) It's Monday, you know what that means. It's Tuesday, you know what that means. It seems like that could be potentially the case, which is such an amazing, brilliant, uh, screw you kind of (laughs) to social media. Because it became his thing. Like, it was funny to see when he took like evil Uno and everybody and he became the leader of the dark order and he started to get like, well, evil Uno, you have to start doing that. <laughs> and then it was like, he missed like a Saturday or something. And he's like, what the hell? <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> I, I hope that, that that becomes a thing, you know, like that's one of his trademarks. I, I love it. I think Brody Lee is awesome. I know you were saying off air that like to immediately like no matches jumped out at you i i'm sure the website was up because i think i was writing here by this point shield in the wide family elimination chamber yeah eventually i was like oh yeah there's the shield one because it is a must watch wrestling match that was a it is fantastic a fantastic match mu- i went back and watched some of their segments man it just felt everything felt so electric and alive uh, that was good. Harper and Ziggler. Wow. You tell me right now title. to do some top five Dolph Ziggler matches. That ladder match at TLC in 2014, that's up there in the top five Dolph Ziggler matches. Um, I enjoyed the one he did with Moxley. I didn't enjoy how long that pay-per-view went, but I remember loving that match. You know? Um I enjoyed even the dog collar match. Like, and it's so cool that a match of that magnitude was his last because he was that like old school working big man. And for me, like he just is that he was that hoss, you know, like he was the one I could have always seen branching out, even though I completely understood why it took him so long to do so because he was seen as such a good heater and he was providing for his family with a bigger contract and a safer thing. And he got to a point where AEW offered him a means out and he took it. And if this wouldn't have happened, I'm sure he would have found even more success because he was on that level of like that undertaker type of performer where he's huge, but he can work. I think 
when I think of my favorite Wyatt, I think of early oh, easily. Wyatt family. Easily that, when it comes that, to the, like, yeah. That faction, man. Bray at that stage and Harper at that stage and Rowan, untouchable in terms of quality of performance. I would put Harper and Wyatt as two of the best working big men and just the way that they're built. They're so good. And for me, I think the heartbreaking thing as a fan, as somebody who enjoyed the actual performance of it, is just, we were just getting started. And in that regard, I feel it gives me very big, like, Eddie vibes. And, like, man, you still had a ways to go. And God only knows what could have become. Or, or like, a Brian Pillman, where it's like, ah, oh, you didn't even get to the attitude area yet. Coming. Yeah, we've talked before about what would have been like if Owen could have worked with some of those people. Yeah, or... and I'm, I'm getting that feeling of like, shit, this could have been an amazing time for you. But I'm glad that you got to have some creative freedom, you know? Yeah, and... I think he would have been a really, really amazing asset for that roster in AEW. Yeah a veteran for the younger guys to sit under the learning tree for and I guess just somebody to be around based off of the fact that everybody keeps having these great stories just you know you can never go wrong with having another positive influence in your life that's for sure absolutely it's really a shame too that they didn't give him the ball with that Orton and Wyatt thing I wanted yeah. so badly for that to be a triple threat and for Harper to win the title. Yeah, I think even just like Harper versus Wyatt was a missed opportunity. And, uh, you know, it just wasn't meant to be, I guess. But damn, mm. could have had a lot of fun with that one. Obviously, that's the worst possible news we can ever do. I mean, it's even worse than when we talk about injuries or... You know, people being arrested or suspended or whatever it might be. Uh, Quite frankly, and no disrespect to any legend, this is the worst. This is worse than when a legend dies. This is the same day as Danny Hodge passing away. The same and day. I'll be and perfectly honest. I have no like memories of Danny Hodge. He's from an era that I don't connect with, so I don't. I can't tell you a single Danny Hodge match that I've ever seen. When you've got uh, you know, a guy like Danny Hodge, or you've got a guy like. Even like a Pat Patterson, who God bless him, was so gifted and so giving. All due respect, they weren't in the prime of their lives, you know. Well, like I and, said earlier, I mean, when somebody reaches a certain age, everybody kind of prepares themselves for this sort of thing. And when somebody's right. like active on the roster, it hits so much worse. It hits so much worse, and I'm grateful for the stories. I'm grateful for the love and energy that has radiated throughout the community since then i hope we never have to do another one of these god yeah you know what else is really good too i'm even though i'm not connected at all to any of them you know i never met him before i never met you know the, pretty much anybody on that whole roster or whatever any of that kind of stuff i'm glad that they were able to keep it to themselves and that yeah. this wasn't one of those things that we just a couple days ago heard oh he's really bad and that's you know whatever and then then it would happen like i'm glad that everybody who was in the know respected the family's wishes and didn't just leak something and i my hat's off to everybody my hat's off to aew for respecting the family's wishes during this tough time and yeah i hope again i hope uh the family finds solace and selfishly, I hope we never have to go through this again. Like this, this hurt. Yeah. So drop a comment below. Tell us your favorite Brody Lee or Luke Harper or John Huber moment or match or memory or anything like that. Um, yeah, that just sucks. Let's yeah. move on to some other topics that we got here. Um, 
as I mentioned before, that was really the main reason why we were doing the hot tags ahead of time. Just to make sure that that doesn't go too far past the point where it's like, oh my God, you guys aren't even talking about this or something. Uh, but we do have some other hot tags we can talk about. One of them being our uh, latest trademark situation. Uh, the Hardy Bros. Not the, have heard. not the positively hard bros. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch the other ones that he was suggesting, but... I've said before I'm a fan of the uh, the Matt Riddle stuff going on, and one um, of them was baked pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Why not? Never had any baked pancake. Can you bake pancakes? I, I don't know if you could bake a pancake. You know what? I'm gonna Google that right now. Can you bake pancakes? I've never tried that. That might be easier than cooking pancakes the normal way. Fluffy and be. soft sheet pan pancakes. I don't know if it comes out the same way, but it looks like it might be good. It looks like it's more of a cake. Thank you, Riddle, for the baked pancakes. You know what? I might bake some pancakes soon. <laughs> um, we have that trademark going on, which means that, at the very least, they're thinking that this might be a team that sticks around for a while. I don't like that. I, I don't know it's just, if it's me, but I, I just don't. I'm not opposed to it. I, what else are they going to be doing? You know, maybe for the interim. You know, yeah. Keep them around for up until WrestleMania or something. Maybe depending on what else they do. Kind of makes me think, though, at the very least, that Bobby Lashley's not dropping that United States title to Matt Riddle. I thought that that was potential. Yet, if they're going to stick with the tag team thing, maybe not the case. But they are a good team that could be, you know, continuing this feud with the Hurt Business in the meantime. I'm cool with that. There's less offensive tag teams that they've made, like Peyton Royce and Lacey Evans. But uh, yeah, I'll give you that. No more updates on the collective trademark from what I've seen. Yeah. Um I can't imagine that whatever that is, it'll go very far. GCW trademarked it on the twenty first, I believe. And they do have first use. Let's see if they can prove that so they can kind of move forward. What else we got going on here? Let's talk. Uh, you said there are some some interesting things put out on the. There's uh... some bits in the Observer. So like there, one of the ones was that NXT is very focused on long term booking and they don't have the <laughs> like quote spon- long term booking. Well, they don't have the spontaneous script rewrites that Raw and SmackDown are often said to have. I wonder why. (laughs) (laughs) Probably somebody's not telling them spontaneously to rewrite everything, you know? You know, so there's that, and there's also that Pat McAfee may not be back in WWE until the spring. And Pat McAfee wasn't a fan of hearing that on the internet. What are your thoughts on what that means? Because I've got a theory that I think people aren't really, I think they're jumping to some wrong conclusions. I think it's just a matter of them going, well, you know, let's uh, hold back a little bit. We'll bring you back in a couple months and we'll do something cool with you then, but we don't want to make it overkill. And I think that him saying, oh, I I heard this on the internet. I think he knew well ahead of time. He's just playing it. But other people are treating it like it's a big, big deal, and it's like some uh, some slight like that. And I'm like, well, you're getting worked. (laughs) The same fucking idiots. Sorry, (laughs) people who were like, oh, did you see Adam Cole? He said fuck you to him on the show. Right. No, you're still getting worked. It's okay. You're getting worked. You're allowed to be worked. Yeah, and like those people were like, I don't know though. You see how mad he was, and it's like, oh, precious. Pat him on the head. You don't need to know everything that's fucking going on, guys. <laughs> yeah, I I think that that's the right call, though, because if you go through, you burn all the Pat McAfee stuff ahead of time. Where do you go from then? And if there's a chance that they can get people in the crowd sometime, you know, the next couple of months or so, be so much better even. Yeah. What are the Hall of Fame plans? They said so you come across something so, about that. Uh... So it's just the same sort of stuff about it's, that they're going to do last year's class for this year and probably do yeah, it. Yeah, and that it's likely going to be uh, virtual. 
Yeah, that sucks. It does suck because it makes you wonder. You know, I kind of want. I kind of want uh, Harper to get the Warrior Award. But actually, I say that, but also there's Shad, who should definitely, you know, be honored with the Warrior Award because of how his life had come to an end. But either way, either one of those men are a great candidate for the Warrior Award whilst actually paying tribute to the wrestling industry. So I hope they do something like that. Screw it, do too. I sense know, that they can't, you know? You're, you're absolutely right. Just, uh, you know, give tribute to people the way that you want to give tribute to. And it's a shame that there's no physical Hall of Fame going on with, you know, a crowd that can actually, like, cheer these people and give them the adulation that they deserve for going into the Hall of Fame. And I'm for that matter, here's one of the things that I'm going to I'll complain about now because we're not going to talk about it until way into next week. Legends Night's not going to be fun. You're not excited to see Tatanka? He's popping up. Yeah. I know that all they know that they had confirmed was Hogan, Flair, Tori, Carlito, Big Show, Alicia Fox, Mickey James. I think that's Melina. all. Melina. Melina. Confirmed. She's yeah. confirmed. Okay. I thought that she wasn't coming back to WWE. <laughs> Well, even if she was, wouldn't you want to not ruin the surprise? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's our impression of salty people online. <laughs> uh, let's see. You couldn't tell, uh, but I was doing a split at the same time. So <laughs> that's, that's right. It was a good split. Yeah. Uh, all right. So it's uh, Tatanka, Jeff Jarrett, Mickey James, Candice Michelle, uh, the Boogeyman, IRS, who I hope tries to kill Randy Orton. Like. Just because <laughs> uh, Beth Phoenix, Mark Henry, Hillbilly Jim, Kurt Angle, Sergeant Slaughter, Booker T, Molina, and Alicia Fox. I hope that they wrestle. I, for one, hope that Molina and Alicia Fox <laughs> get in a ring and wrestle. What I'm anticipating, and this is why I don't think it's going to be fun, is it's just pre taped Zoom things. Yeah. It's just, hi, everyone. It's Candice Michelle here. I love the WWE universe. So thank you for everything that you've done over the years. I can't wait to step back in that ring at some time. Ha ha ha. Nah, see you later, everybody. Really Enjoy nice. the rest of Legends Night. Like, I don't want to see that for three hours. I'm sorry. Um, and I don't really, you know, to be perfectly honest, I, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> for, for that? Like, hey, it's so good to see Austin's here. On Skype. It's like, and this is before COVID when they could have people in arenas and they just had a weird partnership with Skype. But I, I don't want to see people uh, who are doing uh, like th via satellite shit. I want to see people in the arena, especially like what the fuck can Tatanka give us from satellite? Like, you got to be in the arena and at least try for that 24 7 title. I also don't want to see a situation where they just bring people into one room and do one segment like they've done the past couple times, where it's you just want, everybody, see, uh... Teddy Long pops up and he's just like, hey, I'm Teddy Long. And then the other uh, next uh, person comes into the room and you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but you don't want to see uh, Sean and Flair and Christian and Big Show play cards again? <laughs> uh, maybe Randy Orton will come in. The Set room. them on fire to hey. win. Yeah, like, he's going to come in and bring night goggles and set them on fire. I hope they have actual plans and it's not just, we're advertising these names and Sergeant Slaughter is going to cut a promo on Zoom and say, you know, hey maggots, I'm Sergeant Slaughter, remember me from decades ago? I wasn't then... actually in the Navy, please don't sue. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I, I don't like to anticipate a whole lot, um, but, yeah. Hall of Fame is going to be one of those things, too. It seems like it's just the way that everything is now, and it's just not as fun. You said it. It's not as fun. Imagine them trying to do Table for Three, where everybody's eating <laughs> over the... Like, yeah, over well, Zoom. since we're not in the same room, I'm just going to eat my food, guys. Sorry. Like, you know, and uh, at least you're eating your own food, and then you're not dealing with the whatever catering. You know what? I got to backtrack. You know, we didn't talk about Bernie Lee. What about? That steak. 
That was one of the highlights of the year. <laughs> Jordan that, steak, that, steak. <laughs> that steak did look pretty good. <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you what, Brody. Brody knew how to eat a steak, and I appreciate it, and he will be missed. <laughs> Um, what else we got going on here? Let's talk. Uh, let's talk Monday Night Raw because we're you know we're getting into that. Um, can't really break down the full week because the full week hasn't happened, but we can talk about what happened on Monday Night Raw. So for this week in particular, we had the opening was um, setting up who's going to fight Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship next week on Legends Night, which is going to be Keith Lee because he beat Sheamus by pinfall. Nothing too much going on there. Uh, You're thinking that they might actually give the title to Keith Lee, aren't you? Uh, Just because it's New Year's. I don't think that there's a chance. Now, Miz might be a different story. But I I think that there's going to be some kind of a schmoz. I'll say this. If Keith Lee doesn't win the belt, I think Keith Lee should win the Royal Rumble. For a main roster perspective, he's my pick. I'm still going Goldberg, unfortunately. I said a main roster perspective. If we're talking part-timers, it's a different story. But if we got a full-time guy, it's got to be either Keith or Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan's and, my number two, yeah. And I think Bryan and AJ should start it and go the distance. Because it's be been cool. long enough. Uh, Grand Metalik beat The Miz. Why? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I guess it was just to kind of make it seem like The Miz is feeling really really down because later on in the night adam pierce would go up to him and he'd be like wow you guys are doing really shitty you know you're doing even worse than the uh, cleveland browns have been doing or whatever and he says but you know what i got some good news Uh, we've came to a decision turns out it is invalid that john morrison cashed in money in the bank so here you go miss you're mr money in the bank again it's been reinstated and he does a celebratory dance it's just one of those things i guess it's just sort of Oh, okay, well, they, they, they rang the bell, you know, because WWE makes their own rules up, even if they've had it in the past where it's like, there's no disqualifications in a Royal Rumble unless you're Finley, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that kind of shit. So when you go, well, they said it, you got to go with what they say. So Miz is available at this point to cash in and win the uh, championship again. There could be something going on with that. Could be Sheamus interferes and does something with Keith Lee there. Could be... Drew McIntyre just wins outright. Could be that Keith Lee wins outright. I mean, I don't think that that's going to be the case, but you never really know. I would be interested in anything that they choose to do because I I think you have an opportunity here to reset the shitty ratings. And if you can do that by maybe hot-shotting it a little bit and just going with Keith... You know, I, I wouldn't hate it. I don't want them to turn Keith heel. I wouldn't want that either, but I, I don't know, man. I really am kind of like, if they do that, I think that they would do it with a heel turn, and I don't want that to happen. So I guess we'll see you next week. Um, other stuff that happened on this episode, we got... AJ Styles and Omos having a problem with Jackson Riker and Elias. So they'll do a match where Styles beat Elias. Not too much going on there, really. Um, I like the uh, Omos scared away Jackson Riker. And I'm like, yeah, the internet's going to like that gif. <laughs> where he just stops him dead in his tracks. thought that was funny. They're using Omos really well. I like Omos, yeah. Shanna Baszler beat Dana Brooke. Made her top out. And a little bit That's later on, what's that? That's a booking decision that makes sense. Yep. Charlotte Flair beat Nia Jax by DQ because Shayna attacked Charlotte Flair. And both uh, Shayna and Nia Jax put their names in there for the Royal Rumble. Although, for some reason, the website only has Nia Jax down. So. Well, because Nia Jax, wasn't Nia the only one to say the words out of her mouth? She said that she was going to enter the Royal Rumble, and Shayna said, that sounds like a good idea. So it's like, just Well, she's endorsing her tag team partner. (laughs) That's what she's endorsing. So those two, and Bobby Lashley and Daniel Bryan, are the only people that are currently confirmed for the Royal Rumble. Well, technically not speaking, Shayna Baszler, but, you know, that's going to happen. Kind of making me think that we're going to get Shayna Baszler versus Nia Jax at WrestleMania in some kind of a match. You know, Tony, 
You like to speak negative things into existence around this time of year. Now, I'll say this. Over the summer, I wanted to see Nia and Shayna fight in Raw Underground and just beat the crap out of each other. They killed that for me by just having them get along after a while. So, you know, I can't say I want to see that all the way at WrestleMania unless we're just in another WrestleMania that's not in front of people. Which, that's got to be the case. I doubt it. Florida, you don't understand how Florida just thinks about this thing. I think <laughs> they're going to do it in Florida. Uh, what else we got? Uh, Mustafa Ali, Mustafa Ali, I should say, beat Ricochet by submission. Ricochet was fighting off everybody. So they did their job to make sure Ricochet looked strong in his loss. And he did the... They're um, a great mid-card faction. It took them too long to get there. So they're kind of dead on arrival. But now that they're here, they're a great mid-card faction. And this is giving me, not in terms of stature, obviously, internet, but this is giving me major Ahmed uh, Nation Domination vibes, where it's just like, all right, they're going to keep fighting. But you know what? It makes sense every single time they do. Totally not getting an Ahmed and uh, Nation of Domination vibe from this. Uh, again, not from like a visual perspective, but just in terms of like, we're going to fight forever because we just have opposite ideals and you're going to have to beat everybody every single time and you can't do it and I'm going to force you to join us by any means necessary. He's got to join at some point. And Ahmed did, so I guess that makes sense. But he did the uh, the Cody Rhodes thing of I will not join you, that kind of thing or whatever. No. Just no, not as bad as the Cody one you. was. Yeah. We had a situation with the uh Angel Garza and uh the Rose sort I, of thing. I Charlie Cruz though. I Charlie, like to give the interviewer's personality. She's kind of hinting at the idea of like, yeah, what the hell happened? <laughs> like that kind of thing, uh happened between us. And Garza gets bumped into by our truth running around. So you get some fantasy league points. And uh, the Rose gets dropped and smushed, and he gives a turn and says, Oh, so I thought that counts. <laughs> and it's all trampled on and broken, whatever. I thought that was kind of cute, kind of funny. Yeah, I thought that was great. Um, what else do we have on Rose Night? Her business beat New Day and the Hardy Bros. Damn right they did. The positively hard bros. Say it. The uh, Say. baked pancakes. <laughs> And they got two segments out of one where they advertised that Randy Orton was supposed to be on uh, Alexa Bliss's playground. And instead, he's behind the scenes of Firefly Funhouse wrecking the puppets, you know, ripping the head off of Rambling Rabbit and everything. Poor and rabbit. they end up saying, yeah, well, later on, we're going to do that. So I hate when they do this. If you don't have three hours worth of material, don't have a three hour show. Book another match. You know, don't have to do two segments. That's a full half hour at the very least that's dedicated to this. If not longer. And it ends with it's something that enough. I feel was really kind of. I, I don't like it. I thought it was kind of pointless. Alexa goads Randy Orton says, you know, you should just burn me the way that you burned the fiend. Or Orton waits a while and says, you don't think that I'll do it. And he lights the match. And that's the end of the episode. And. I get the whole cliffhanger thing. I'm not annoyed about the cliffhanger. I'm annoyed that it took a half an hour for them to get to the point that nothing happened. They didn't establish anything. They didn't set up anything. It was just literally Alexa being like, mm, I'm sad. I disagree, and here's why. Here's why I liked it. I th I think the character turn of Bliss being like, set me on fire then is fine. And I, I like that they're at least pitching, hey, we'll do something darker. I think where they made the mistake, or even if it would have just been, wow, that was silly, you should have had Randy light the fucking match. Because, okay, so I'm getting ahead of myself. Alexa Bliss covers the ring and herself in gasoline. And you should have just had Randy light the match. And... Put it on the ring, and then as everything's about to go up in flames, lights out, the fiend laughing sound, and we're out. 
instead of doing, you're scared to do it, you're scared to do it, you're scared to do it, Fiend lights out, and then Randy decides, okay, now I'll like the match. Fade to black. That's the part I didn't like. Because I thought everything that they tried to accomplish was fine. But you should have just done it to where you're not saying, did Randy Orton burn Alexa Bliss alive? Tune in next week. Same bat time. Same bat channel. You know, like, it felt out of place for Raw. Especially when you have Raw talk right after. It's like, can somebody tell me if Randy set the ring on fire? Yeah, you would think that in the background, they would just be like, oh, yeah, so by the way, he, like, totally didn't do that. Anyway, all right, let's get into the stories with, uh, you know, like... I just don't like those kind of things because to me, this is going to sound really douchey, but I'll say it. It's insulting for anybody's intelligence. And I get that it's a stupid wrestling show. So it's like, what do you mean? You know, Mr. Hoity Toity here, you know, uh, I'm, I'll believe it when the Undertaker comes back to life, but I won't whatever. It's like, yeah, it sounds kind of stupid. But at the same time, it's like, you know, at the end of the day, your angle for this episode was you, we're going to show you the next in, uh, installment of this feud and you didn't really have anything. So you do a cliffhanger because a cliffhanger is the cheapest way to get people talking because you just didn't finish the story. It's like J.J. Abrams in Star Wars, the mystery box, you know, that kind of <laughs> philosophy of we'll just not tell you something so that way you'll be intrigued. And then isn't that fun? It's like, well, no, <laughs> that's not good storytelling. That's imagine if I was like, now we, I said, we already recorded our end of the year awards. Imagine if at the end of the smart out moment awards, I was like, all right. And my pick for superstar of the year is, and then it cut to the end. And then I said, <laughs> wait, wait until the next episode. Would that be a matter of being like, oh, Tony knows how to draw in an audience? Or would it be like, oh, what a dick? You know? <laughs> I, I would enjoy hearing you go, my pick for overall superstar of the year is, and we are being counted out, like, <laughs> cut it right off. Any of those things, they just bug me because I don't consider it proper writing. I if understand. you can't, like, draw somebody in with some actual story and you need a gimmick, then it means that you're not a really good writer. You know, the same with uh, horror movies for that matter. A horror movie to me is not a good horror movie. If it's literally quiet and then a violin shriek, jump scares aren't storytelling. They're gimmicky. It's the same as being in a, a roller coaster ride or something. So you can't be like, Oh my God, that horror movie was so great. It scared me a lot. Cause every once in a while it just went, Wah! no, that's not a, a movie. That's a, it's a ride, you know? Right. I understand. So something like this, I'm like, all right, so nothing happened then. Alexa's like, hey, come to the ring. And he's like, nah. Then she goes, oh, yeah? And he goes, all right. And then he comes to the ring, and she's like, burn me. And he goes, nah. And she's like, come on. He goes, mm, all right. And then we cut it away before anything happens. <laughs> That's the summary of the whole thing. The best part and of the whole thing was that he kicked uh, Huskus to Pig Boy. So, like, I get the gripe with it. But my thing is, like you said, if you'll accept Kane setting the Undertaker on fire, I think you can at least, you can begrudgingly not like how this angle plays out, but I saw way too many people being like, well, this is just silly. And that, it's like, God, dude, Kane set the Undertaker on fire all the time. Undertaker's come back from being burned alive at least Four times in my lifetime. Yeah, but he's the Undertaker. <laughs> well, if we're going to go that route, we're supposed to believe that she got some powers from the Fiend. Yeah, but she's Alexa. She's the little pixie girl. I don't buy it. <laughs> pixies? Pixies yeah, she's like a little pixie, uh, you know, NXT. Yeah, it's but they Glitter, glitz, sparkle, bliss. I, I used to, you know, I really used to like that. Glitter, glitz, sparkle, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it works a lot better with the heel theme song, but you know. What if she starts pulling that out and trying to make that part of that? She should, you know, storytelling. 
go back to the previous incarnations and start work and then uh, into the mix i have liked a lot of what they've done with bray wyatt like doing things like huskus the pig boy where it's like okay that's clearly a reference to husky harris and whatever sometimes they can pull that off really well and other times it's just like yeah, i just wanted to wait another week you didn't really have a story that's what i felt like for this week so i'm not praising them for any of that to me that's a that's a bust i respect your honesty the only other hot tag that I got written down is to talk about the stuff that's happening in the 30-day countdown in January on the network. Because next time you guys are going to be hearing from us, it's going to be the new year. So let's uh, see what WWE's got in mind. They have mentioned things starting off January 10th. So they really just they skipped like, ah, 10 days. We got Broken Skull Sessions with Bailey, which would be interesting. Yeah. I-, I like that. Bailey's good. I talk a lot about Bailey being good on a podcast that you'll hear over the next few days. I uh, complained about Bailey (laughs) for a while (laughs) on that. But I'm very interested to hear what she's got to say because, you know, it's me complaining about her being overrated doesn't mean the same thing as me not liking Bailey. I like Bailey. Uh, They have WWE Untold, AJ Styles' Royal Rumble debut. I wonder why they're waiting so long for that. They wait long for a lot of these things, and I don't know why. Kind of strange. That's on Sunday, January 10th. On the 19th, there's the best of WWE Attitude Era Royal Rumble matches from Matt Camp. Probably not going to be watching that one. I don't like that they make Matt Camp do these things. I don't know if they necessarily would make him. He probably wants to do them. You know, He's he did the definitely Goldberg a one. diehard fan. Did you watch the Goldberg one? Nope. I don't watch any of the uh, like the best of here's a bunch of clips type of things. Well, no, the Goldberg uh, Untold. Uh, I don't remember if I did or not, so I probably didn't, actually. It might, it might be worth it. There's WWE Playback 2020 Royal Rumble matches. Now that I like a lot. I like Playback. Well, people could be like, oh, you remember this? Oh, yeah, this is what happened in this time. I remember the crowd was doing this, you know. The crowd said, <laughs> Yeah, I remember when the crowd counted. There's going to be a Pat Patterson documentary on January uh, 24th. That'll be very, very interesting to see. A chronicle for Bianca Belair. I honestly don't anticipate that being a very good one because Chronicle tends not to be all that great. It's like uh, if you have nothing that's really like what you're doing a chronicle for, then it ends up just being people saying, "Uh, I'm trying my best to get to the next level hundred times but they are they are and she's great but i don't think i need to watch a whole thing like that there's yeah, chronicle is very hit or miss with me the best of wwe royal rumble matches of the 2010s again i'm not gonna probably watch that because it's just another best of yeah um i like royal rumbles so that's always good when they compile them royal rumbles are great they're easy to, like, just, you don't know what you want to really want to watch, so just put on a Royal Rumble and watch that instead. Because you're inevitably going to be like, oh, man, remember this guy? Or yeah. Remember this moment? That's so good. There's a round table of the first women's Royal Rumble match. Might check that out. Who are the four in the round table? Charlotte, Natalia, Nijax, and Mickey James. It's a weird grouping. Why those four specifically? Because Becky Lynch well, isn't available, I guess. Charlotte, of course, because Charlotte's Charlotte. <laughs> Naya, because Naya's Naya. Mickey and Natty to be like, you know, well, we so didn't have this back in the day. and you know, Yeah. Natty's oh, right. a transitional. We just, we just discovered why. <laughs> I am curious, though, why it's Mickey, for instance, instead of somebody like a Trish. Because Mickey's under contract. Maybe it's just easier, you gotta, yeah. You got to use her. <laughs> Maybe they're not going to give her an entrance and you know do all that kind of crap that they do. There's also the day of Royal Rumble 2014. Never before seen like footage. That. So that I'm very interested in because that's they never they that's weren't making the, these back then. That's the wild one. That's the fucking Batista. Like let's all lose our shit. Blue Tista. No, he he wasn't even blue yet. He just what did he come out in the the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu gear? And people, it's the weirdest one ever to me because, yes, it led to a lot of great things. Also, that's the one where CM Punk leaves. Uh, it, 
Daniel Bryan was never advertised for that rumble, and I genuinely believe that was one of the weirdest moments of fans upsetting themselves. The man was never announced for the Royal Rumble. Yeah, that's true. People are just like, he's got to win. He's got to be a surprise <laughs> one. And then Ray Mysterio comes out to number 30, and people are like, <laughs> oh, fuck Ray. And it's like, Ray didn't do anything. <laughs> Even less than that, it was like, he lost to Bray Wyatt earlier in the night. Like, what makes you think that this guy is coming back to win a Royal Rumble badge? <laughs> Guaranteed there's people in the crowd going, no, nah, it's okay, though. He lost that because he's going to win later, you know? Yeah. And there's also WWE icons Yoko Zuna, which I'll definitely be checking out because Yoko was awesome. I am looking forward to that so much, Tony. So, so very much. I love Yoko Zuna. I love the New Generation era. We talk about this all the time. That is my favorite stuff, especially because nobody talks about it. Yeah, you people know? really don't. They skip right to the Attitude Era. They go... And so Hulkamania was great, and then uh, we had this weird moment. I look, Sean and Brad and Tentaker, and I, uh, the Attitude Era. Like, weird. Like, why aren't you mentioning Sparky Plug? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Callum, when we were watching ECW, was just like, hey, look, it's Sparky Plug. <laughs> what a great. I love Callum. <laughs> Well, if you love Callum, then you should check out the next episode of the Paul Heyman Smackdown podcast coming your way in a few days. That's going to be episode number 28, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and we'll be in the year 2003, myself and Callum. We go back in time and we watch every episode of Smackdown where Paul Heyman was the head writer. That's going to be wrapping up soon, I believe. It stops at February, and then we're going to do one more special dark cast covering WrestleMania 19. And I've told Callum this. I'd like to actually just do... And no edited fan outs table with you. I was like, hey, let's just fucking watch WrestleMania 19 and we'll shoot the shit. How long yeah. is WrestleMania 19? You know, it's like, it's like three and a half. Might be able to do that. Yeah, I think it'll be a good time. Who knows if I have my uh, new computer by then? Well, I should. I mean, come on. <laughs> if I, <laughs> there's a shipping error for some reason. But if I got that all set up ahead of time, and if that's easier for me to work in some kind of capacity, then maybe we'll even try to do like a live watch along or something. That would be awesome. I, I love that WrestleMania, and I'm willing to bet you haven't seen it. So I want to watch it with you. You would win that bet. <laughs> it's a good one. It's Hogan and uh, Vince and Sean and Jericho and all the good matches. I've seen like Sean and Jericho separately. Yeah. You know, but never actually sat down and watched the full event start to finish. Haven't done that for a handful of WrestleManias. Not too many. I've only missed uh, 18, 19, great, great. 20 and 21, I think. Great and one of the best. I think that they're the only ones that I haven't seen all the way through. I might have, I might not have seen 22 all the way through. I don't remember for sure. What was 22? It was Cena and Triple H. Okay, yeah, so I didn't see 22 all the way through either. 23, I know that I've I've seen. So, like, that's what we'll be doing with Paul Hammond SmackDown. Uh, if you want to see us do more of that stuff, donate to the Pick Your Poison tier on Patreon. Tony, hit him with the Patreon plug. Patreon.com slash moment. Mentioned it before. If you want to help us grow, that is the best way to do that. Even if it's just a dollar, because the more people that do that, the better it is for everybody. You know, everybody can lift a little bit. Not everybody has to lift a whole lot. So there, see the uh, ten dollar dark cast here. There's the pick your poison here. If you want to request something and you want us to really do a particular thing in mind, maybe you are in the mood of like we really, really want another Mount Rushmore, and I want it to be this oddball type of Mount Rushmore. Then you know, it's part of the pick your poison tier. You can say do this, guys, and then we will. As long as it's within reason, obviously. It's not like Mount Rushmore of the. Uh, you know everything that's ever ha happened in the history of wrestling would be like i don't even know how we would do that but yeah if anything happens if you have a suggestion and we, it's not something that i think we can do we'll figure something out and we'll you know or i'll refund you the money if that's the case but uh we got that going on we, we will got figure the... it out i'm sorry we'll, we'll figure it out yeah there's the merchandise shops tea public and red bubble if you want to pick up some kind of a t-shirt or uh, a mug or a phone case phone case that's the word phone i mixed that with mug 
a fug case <laughs> or you want to, you know, take part in any of that kind of stuff for Smart Cut Moment, a Mango Tees or Fanboys Anonymous. And obviously, if you don't know what Fanboys Anonymous is, go to fanboysanonymous.com. Check out movie reviews. Check out some stuff about video games. I uh, was struggling to sleep again last night. Haha, <laughs> you never heard that before, right? And I was writing uh, some notes to myself about some random things. And one of them was, ho oh should be fire and psychic type. And I was like, maybe I'll write an article about that. <laughs> I'm worried so, about you. <laughs> for many reasons, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so, you know, you might see another, like, some more Pokemon video game type discussion or something. If anything on that kind of spectrum, you'll find it on Fanboys Anonymous. It's the blue brand. It's, uh, as somebody mentioned before, it's the Undertaker to the cane side of things. But It's really weird because, honestly, it's actually the cane to the Undertaker. It's cane to the Undertaker, yeah. Like... Yeah. As far as colors, though, it's a different aesthetic. But we got that in the works. Who knows what else is happening there? We just did a Wonder Woman 1984 review, so check that out if you're interested. Might do one for Soul. Might check that out soon. You, I hope we do one for Soul. Soul is good. Either way, we will be doing Batman Soul of the Dragon on, in January at some point because I have it pre-ordered, and that means Tony has it pre-ordered. So we either do Soul and or Soul of the Soul Dragon. Of the- or lots of souls. So we're gonna review Soul Glow and uh <laughs> Soul Man. <laughs> Blues Brothers. Uh Dr. Scholl's Souls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're we're uh, uh orthotic review company now. Yeah, it's you know. Well, I mean if I'm gonna make a third brand, it's <laughs> Actually, it wouldn't be the third all talk shows. Third, so yeah, that, that would that would constitute another all talk show. Talk, it's all, it's yeah, it's definitely all. It is all. Well, that is all for us. Uh, you can follow us on our social media accounts. Rob is at Dude Felice. Yep. I am at uh, Tony Mango. Check out Fightful.com. Check out Fightful Select. Check out WrestleZone while I'm still there. Check them out when I'm not still there. You know. Just check them out mostly while I'm still there. And, uh, yeah, Tony, as far as recordings go, we have made it through this year. And I thank you. For and I thank you. you. <laughs> we thank all of you. Except for you, Barry. Yeah. The hell, Barry? Yeah. Way to be an elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Always gotta make us address you, Jesus. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> Some brand new person's just like, what the fuck are they talking about? You know, you know. <laughs> no, thank you, everyone, for uh, for all your support. Thank you, Rob, for joining me on all these podcasts all the time and being the person who stays up until whenever in the morning to talk to me about nonsense. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed it, everybody. Hopefully you enjoy the rest of the year. Hopefully you enjoy 2021. And we'll be back. Soon enough. I mean, technically speaking, the next thing you're going to be hearing from us is going to be the awards. We already did that. But after that, then we're going to roll along past the next uh, Polyman Smackdown. And then next week, the main event is going to be how we always kick off the main event for uh, the beginning of the year. The one to watch and the future endeavors forecast. So we're going to talk about who we think is going to leave the company in some fashion, you know, be fired or released or be forced to retire or whatever it might be, as well as. The one to watch because they're going to do a great job this year. And spoiler alert, I did a terrible pick this year for 2020. Who knows? Maybe well, I'll. I, I got screwed too. I did so need to know. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So who knows what we end up picking? That's interesting. And then later on throughout January, we have a blank week for January 13th. Not sure what we're going to fill that blank with, but we'll figure that out down the line. We're going to do another fan tracks uh, or fan outs table. Fan tracks is the Fanboys Anonymous version. The uh, Royal Rumble. Every time we get around to that, we watch a Royal Rumble. We've watched a couple of them at this point, and you know what? They do really well as far as like views, and I really enjoy watching Royal Rumbles. So we're definitely going to do another fan ounce table for one of those. We'll get into the Royal Rumble predictions, talk about the whole breakdown of who's going to be the Iron Man, the Iron Woman, who's going to last the longest, the shortest, get the best eliminations and all that stuff. Question marks as far as February goes, because February right now, we're in a weird spot where... We don't know when Elimination Chamber is, and we also don't know what's happening with Super Showdown because they've advertised that Super Super Showdown's on the list. I don't know how. Oh, I'm 
Rumor has it it's Armageddon. What do you mean? That they're going to do Armageddon. Instead of Super Showdown? Correct. So they'll just kind of throw that in there. They'll just be like, ah, oh, sorry. It, it, it'll just be a February show in the Thunderdome. I hope that's not the case. I want them to just do Elimination Chamber. If that's the case. And we also know we got AEW Revolution coming up February 27th. So that's going to be the, uh, around that time, it's going to be the 10 year anniversary of the YouTube channel, not the podcast itself, but the channel's creation, making me feel old. And before you know it, we'll be rolling into WrestleMania. Hell so yeah. That's, uh, stuff to look forward to. And we will see you when it comes down to all those things down the pipeline, everybody. But for now, that's going to do us in. Thanks for listening. Adios. This has been another Smart Out Moment. We're being counted out. 